Well, I've got a new box here in the Tangent Audio Labs. As you can see, it's from Rigol. Uh, inside here is a DS1102E. Uh, that is their low-end uh, 100 megahertz two-channel digital storage oscilloscope. So, it was shipped pretty well. Uh, the outer box was actually an original Rigol box, and it is, in fact, double boxed. A little bit of damage there. It's got the right model number here on the side. It says DS1102E, made in China, as you would expect. Pop this open. All looks like it's factory sealed with the original tape. It's got a US IEC line cord tucked into the side here. It's like a CD-ROM, uh, packing list, maybe some instructions, and a couple of scope probes. We'll pull the scope out. In fact, there's a USB cable sitting at the bottom of the box. So the box is empty. off and boy is it cute it's a little tiny scope reminds me uh, size wise of maybe an old um, Tektronix TDS 210 or something like that one of the uh, early monochrome LCD portable oscilloscopes that I remember maybe from 10 or 12 years ago inside the plastic silica gel to help it on the long boat ride over from China and there it is. It's pretty cute. 320 by 240 display. USB port on the front. Your uh, channel 1, channel 2 inputs. External trigger. Uh, a test output, which is probably like a 1 kilohertz square wave. Uh, ground on the front. Uh, vertical. Horizontal knobs. Uh, trigger level. This is probably like a multi-function knob. They all seem to have buttons behind them. Now the keypad is pretty nice. It feels like a rugged solid unit. Over here on the side, left hand side, there's the power cord, IEC input. On the back, USB device port, uh, RS-232 port, and a pass-fail port. Uh, the much talked about fan on the right hand side see how loud that is in a bit uh, and a handle that flips up on the top nice and the power button is right here on the top I thought one interesting point of comparison uh, would be to look at the Rigol digital scope uh, next to a classic 1980s vintage Tektronix uh, analog digital mixed scope um, this is a Tech 2465, 300 megahertz, basically an analog scope with a few uh, digital-like features. It's got cursors and stuff like that, but everyone's pretty familiar with the size of these things that spent any time in a lab, and uh, they're pretty comparable. Uh, they're almost exactly the same uh, width on the faceplate, and the screens are about the same uh, size-wise. So if you're used to staring at something like this, uh, this won't seem too small. Uh, if you're used to staring at a more modern digital scope, well, maybe it will seem a little bit small. So let's power this thing on for the first time. Power button is on the top here. All seems to light up. It says I have 2.06 firmware on there, which I understand is pretty new. So I've unpackaged the probes. Uh, they are a little on the you know flimsy side but considering you can spend easily as much as this entire scope costs just buying probes uh, you know they should do the job now what looks like the potentially worst bit about these probes uh, is that these are stamped metal the uh, the hooks they're not actually wire hooks like better probe leads are but you know probably won't be that big of a deal uh, but they have 1x 10x adjustment they have probe compensation adjustment, and they do give you the tool for that uh, in the probe package. 
So let's hook one of these up to the test input and see if we can figure out how to get it to trigger. Source channel one. Well, looks like it should be. There we go. Just had to set the, the trigger level. It's going to shut off channel two for now. Go back to channel one. Yeah, so there we go. There's uh, channel one functional. And I will just dangle channel two. of that as well. Turn that on. And that one definitely looks like it needs to have some adjustments done there. Just kind of an odd little flash on the display I see every once in a while. Not really sure what to make of that. There we go, we've got the calibration uh, square waves up. Thought I would give you an unscientific but general idea of what the fan on this thing sounds like. It is actually a little bit louder than my initial impressions. So I've taken it up into a fairly quiet room in my house and uh, we'll uh, turn it on here and you can hear the characteristic sounds of the fan. It's a fairly uh, white noise sound in nature. Uh, it's a gentle whoosh more than it is a screaming fan trying to push through uh, grates that are too small. Uh, but it it is uh, noticeable for sure. So this time the uh, microphone in the camera is basically aimed right at the fan of the Rigol. And I'm gonna turn it on here. And obviously you really can't judge overall sound level uh, from a YouTube video, but you at least get an idea of what the character of the sound is. And you can hear it relative to, say, button clicking. And the sound of my voice.